This is going to be a short little video on how to identify your pump. We have some pumps on the table here. Uh, by casting numbers, by part numbers, um, very easy to figure out once you can get the information off of the pump for us to decide what parts or what whole pump you might need to order. So we'll take a look at a few pumps. I'm short a few pumps today, but these will give you the general idea of how to identify your pump. All right, the first pump we're going to identify is the Bell & Gossett Series 100 pump, kind of Bell & Gossett's bread and butter pump. It's a small, more residential, small apartment building pump. And to ID it, it's very easy to do. Even if the bearing assembly's been replaced, there's still part numbers on these tags. And I know out in the field, a lot of people like to remove the tags and get them out of the way, or they fall off because of oil and grease but it's still pretty easy to ID along with the motor. Now some of your older Series 100s don't have this sticker. It's actually stamped in the steel. It's the only Bell & Gossett pump to use a 12th horsepower motor. So if you have a 12th horsepower motor, it's most likely the one that you have is the Series 100. If none of this information is available, the best way to identify it is on all of Bell & Gossett's volute bodies. They all have casting numbers. And the casting number on this one is right here. Now some of the older pumps start with the letter P and only have maybe one or two numbers, but it's still identifiable. This one, if you notice, it's a six digit. We call it a six digit number. It starts with a P and five numbers. It's crucial. If you can get that casting number, we'll be, be able to identify your pump and get your parts or a whole new one. Now that's the Series 100. I'm going to take you to the other side of the table. This is a Series 60 maintenance free that Bell & Gossett makes. Now I also have a volute body here that is on the larger Series 60 and I just wanted to show you the difference between the two volutes. I'll cover the, the complete pump first. Again, all of these pumps have casting numbers. The P number is crucial. Also, the information that you give us, two-bolt flange or a four-bolt flange. And then I'll go back to the complete one again. On these Series 60s, all of them come with a steel identification tag that's riveted to the volute body. This one is a stock pump. And as soon as Dave gets the shot, if you notice the bottom part number here, it's six digits. All of the Series 60s, whether they're maintenance free or oilable, start with a 172 number. If you can find that 172 number anywhere, that's going to be the complete product number for this whole pump. If the tag is missing, go by the casting number on the volute and the horsepower rating. Single phase, three phase, half horse, three quarter horse. It helps us out to identify all the individual parts that are on this pump. Now on this Series 60 here, this is I believe an inch and a quarter. I'm sorry, this one's an inch and a half, so it's a two bolt flange. If you have a larger Series 60 and it takes four bolt flanges, it's going to be a larger Series 60. Of course the motor and bearing assembly are still attached out here but it's still going to have the steel tag on it. And I want to show you something on this steel tag. How this one made it out of the factory, I have no idea, but it happens. If you notice, the six digit number is on this volute, on the bottom of the tag, right here. But if you also notice at the top of the tag, it gives you the size, the maximum size impeller, what series it is, and the gallons per minute and feet of head. That tells me that this pump made it out of the factory with a seven digit part number, but it's still a special built pump. All of this information is crucial when you call us. We might go by the seven digit number or we might go by the built to order factor that's all on this tag right here. And then after the series 60, I don't have a series 80 or a 1531. We'll move to the small 1510 that I have here. It's a base mounted pump. 
It's coupled with a rubber coupler. Obviously, you can tell by the coupler guide or the coupler guard. I'll come around this side. Everything's uh, you can identify this whole pump by all casting numbers or the tag that's on this one. This tag is steel and it's riveted to the base rail of the pump. It gives you the series, the size, the construction. The impeller size is if you're looking at it, it says seven. That tells us that it has a seven inch impeller in it. Also, if you notice, it has a seven digit code. That seven digit code is what they call a pump kit. In other words, this kit is sold without a motor. So if you can get that and tell us what your horsepower is, we'll tell you if they match up and they should be together. Now, if that steel tag is missing, the other options you have on the 1510 is look at the bearing assembly. They make three bearing assemblies for this pump. Two are very popular. One is not popular at all. This is the small bearing frame 1510. It has a four bolt pattern that it bolts to the cover plate. If you go to the next step and it's called a large bearing frame, that bearing frame is going to have a larger bolt pattern. That's one of the crucial things that you can tell us, whether it's a small or large bearing frame. The next step, of course, we go to the casting numbers. If you notice, P and five numbers. It's crucial. We've located the volute casting number. Now another uh, crucial casting number is this cover plate right here. Here's the casting number on the 1510 cover plate. Now don't forget, they, they might be in different positions, but it's going to be somewhere on that cover plate. It's another good way to identify what type of pump it might be. One more casting number. If we're not sure what the bearing frame is, the cast itself has a casting number. That will tell us whether it's a large frame, extra large frame, or a small frame 1510. If you have to go by casting numbers, make sure you get us the important information off of the motor as far as horsepower, frame size comes into play there also. If you can get horsepower and frame size, we'll be able to get close with parts. We can always try and help. That's how you identify a few of the Bell & Gossett pumps. Not a lot of wrench turning here, so I don't have to take any Advil, but I'll tell you what, I still got to smoke. <laughs>